Father God in heaven, we approach your throne room in glory this night, this evening. God, we thank you because we recognize more and more how real you are. And Father God, we dare not stand behind this pulpit without seeking you, God, without beseeching you and begging you, God, that you will be with us as we deliver this word. God, I recognize more than ever that the warfare is great, that I'm not fighting against mere flesh, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. And so, God, I rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus. And, God, I stand on the authority by which your son, Jesus Christ, came and shed his blood. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. My shield, my protector. Thank you for the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ that shall never lose its power. Now, God, be with us through this teaching, my God, that we, our minds may expand to understand the mysteries of the kingdom unveiled, that our minds may expand to, to not only grasp it in this moment, but to grasp it as we leave even later on. God, help us so that we can be a help to build up your kingdom, so that we can free a, free a captive soul. My God, that we can open up uh, prison doors, set the captives free. So God, Holy Spirit, have your way is my prayer. In Jesus' name we pray and God's people said, amen. amen, amen. Tonight we begin the teaching, the reason the LGBT used the rainbow as their symbol. Okay, that's, you know, I could stop right there. We need to understand they are used as their symbol. Are we, are we clear on that? <laughs> there, there, there is no doubt in your mind, right? No doubt in my mind that this community of people, and let me say, I'm going to put it out there in the beginning, this community of God's people, God's creation, I'll put it that way, okay? Humanity belongs to God. Can I rest it there for a moment? Humanity, it doesn't matter what state they're in, they have been made in the image of God. And we want to understand tonight how the enemy spirit seeks to unravel that. And so we're dealing with, again, the reason the LGBT used the rainbow as their symbol. And tonight we want to begin the teaching dealing with part one, the Genesis Deception and division. First and foremost, let me say that the reason God uses the rainbow is in total opposition to the reason the LGBT community uses the rainbow. So, so let, let's saddle that. <laughs> that the reason they use it, the reason God uses it, totally contrasting reasons. As a matter of fact, the LGBT community, whoever began it, somebody began it, right? Whoever began it was very strategic in deciding to use that symbol. So it's not merely choosing something full of different pretty colors to represent a we are the world effect. That's what most people think, though. That's what most of that community thinks. That this rainbow, it's showing that we are a diverse community and we all belong together. But I, I dare say this teaching is going to open up some of their, a lot, many of their understanding as to the real reason whoever began this movement used the rainbow. And notice tonight, and please, that I have to build a foundation, but the foundation is something else. So first thing we want to ask is, who is God? Because before we talk about anything else, let's realize who God is. God is sovereign. Well, sovereignty can be defined as having supreme authority, control, and power over all that has happened, is happening, and will happen in the future in all times across history. That, that's a picture of God, sovereign. Okay? Now, sovereign speaks to the fact that God is over everything. There is nothing or no one who reigns over God 
or is bigger than God. God will not be directed. Okay, I need you to get that in your spirit. God is over all. <laughs> God is before all, and he is ultimately in charge of all. You got to understand the sovereignty of God. You know, God is not just Mamby Pamby. He isn't an option. He isn't a God among other gods. He's sovereign. Okay. Now, let me read these scriptures to show God's sovereign power. And I'm going to um, try to just run through them. Psalms 135, verse 6. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth, in the seas, and all deep places. In other words, God does what he wants to do. In heaven and earth, deep, God does what he wants to do. You see, you got to get that attitude. God does what he wants to do. Psalms 115, 3. But our God is in heaven. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Okay? God is in heaven. God is in charge. God was in charge in the beginning in heaven. He is in charge today in heaven. So nobody can get up in heaven and do what they want because God is in charge of heaven. You, you, you got that. Good, good, good. Isaiah 46 and 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Again, I'm trying to tell you that God said, I'm in charge. God says that I am sovereign and that I answer to no one. And no one has the right to ask me questions and expect me, let me add that, to condense to mankind, as it were, and be on the witness stand to try to prove my case. God ain't going to try to prove his case. Daniel 4 and 35, it says, And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, what you doing? What doest thou? I'm telling, see, when you, when you understand God's sovereign power and that you worship God and God permits you to be in his presence, there's a certain attitude that you carry yourself according to. Because the power that enables us is sovereign. Romans 9, 19 through 21. Thou wilt say unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but O oh man, who art thou that thou repliest against God? Don't back answer God. Okay. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Lord Jesus, I, you know I could park it right there. You have no, no right to ask why God. And, mm -mm -mm. and you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just supposed to be reading. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto other and another unto dishonor? Let's just be real. Not every vessel that God has formed will be formed unto honor because of the thing called choice. You see. Job 42 and 2, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Of course not, God is omniscient. He knows everything. Ain't no sense talking about a hidden agenda, not with God. There's nothing hid from him. And then Job 9 and 12 says, Behold, he taketh away, who can hinder him? Who will say unto him, what doeth thou? Again, we are not going to question God. See, any time... You begin to question God, you just stepped out of faith. Yeah. And now you're looking for answers, humanity. The humanity in you wants to find the answer. All right. So let's settle something in our hearts. God is God, and he is God alone. No other entity can tell God what to do. Mm. As God is sovereign, let's look at what God did. In the beginning, Genesis 1, 1 through 4, so familiar, but I tell you, you just keep on preaching from it, it'll keep on speaking to you. 
Here it is. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. Just always understand that. God is always going to divide the light from darkness. Okay, let's go on. So, Let's settle something else in our hearts. God is God, and he is God alone. Let's look at what God did in the beginning. The earth is our focus. It was dark and formless. Remember, Dr. Tony Evans described it as a swamp, which means that water and soil were mixed. That makes sense because a swamp has no form. We cannot see the bottom of a swamp. Anybody feel like going swimming in a swamp? Not Bermudians, never tell the world. <laughs> we don't know what's under there. I'm tell, I, I can tell you right now, I'm still thinking of the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> right? When I was a child, they talked about the Loch Ness Monster. I, anything dark, I can't see. I'm like, the Loch Ness Monster is in there. <laughs> so, so we don't deal with swimming in the swamp. It's a mess. No one wants to walk there. Now let's look at a swamp defined as land that is always wet, and often partly covered with water. Take a look at the slide there. A swamp is similar to a lake, but shallow. Swamps are covered with water, but that water is shallow enough to allow plants to grow, reaching the surface. Now, water-tolerant plants or trees generally dominate swamps. Here's the point. Can you imagine no sun to even see the swamp? That's where I want to go. We can identify the swamp because, oh, that's swampy lamb. That's, that's marsh, you know, marsh folly, you know, around back TCD, you know, because they say, oh, that's swamp. But imagine darkness where you couldn't even tell there was a swamp there. That's the level of darkness that we speak to that was in the beginning. That is why darkness filled the face of the deep. It was full of darkness. See, full of darkness means full of darkness, which means you can't see anything but full of darkness. Now, understand that the swamp pictures had a form. Yet God says in the beginning, here it is. That's what it was right there. That's the swamp. You see the swamp? That's the swamp that was in the beginning. There was no form. It was dark and formless. The swamp in the beginning was like what you see there. Darkness filled the face of the earth. Therefore, in this awful space and place, something happened. Something happened right here. It's God's spirit moved. I can't preach it. I got to teach it. God's spirit moved. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. In essence, God's face showed up in the face of darkness. God's face showed up. When God's face showed up, what was it that appeared? Well, to dispel the currently unacceptable condition, God does something because life will not be able to exist and flourish in the darkness and abyss of the present dark earth. Verse 3, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. In other words, God thought, and out of his thoughts, there was a performance once God spoke about what was formed in his mind. God called forth light. That was it. That's it. He sent it into the dark abyss, the swamp. He sent forth, uh, in the face of darkness, he called forth who he is, light. God is light. Don't miss it. God created light to get rid of, yeah, 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 there, confusion, sure death, that which he does not agree with, the opposite of who he is, things that have no order, no beauty, and no goodness. 
So in a dark space, God speaks forth light so that all of this will be gotten rid of. Now, the key is God spoke forth light. Let's look at what is light. One, the natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. The only reason you can see me and I can see you is because it's light. If it's midnight and, and there's no moon out, no stars out, no electricity, well, I couldn't see you, you couldn't see me. So again, the only reason that we can see each other is because of the presence of light. Two, the understanding of a problem or mystery, enlightenment, light. All right, what does that mean for the LGBT community? One, they must come against what is natural. Because I just told you the meaning of light, the natural agent. So the LGBT community has to come against what's natural. Two, they must stimulate sight away from the light. They don't want you to see the light. You can get it. I'm taking my time here. It's all going come to come to fruition. They don't want you to see the light. Three, they must make things disappear that should be seen. Four, they want to bring about a misunderstanding of what God was saying by using the rainbow. I repeat, God spoke the first creative word, which was light. God is light. First John 1 John 1.5. Then this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God's word is light. God is light. Satan's response, have his creation, humanity, not focus on God as light, but to focus on merely light. You, you get it. Just be patient with your pastor. Just focus merely, just on merely light. Not on God. Have people so captivated, so captivated by light that they stop at the lights and never continue to connect with God, the God of lights and the God who is light. They are focused on the light but not focused on the giver of light. It'll get clear. Psalms 44, verse 3. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but the right hand and thine arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. Because what, what I have to do right now in this foundation is keep on impressing to the church, keep on impressing in your heart and mind, God is light. God is light. Go, you leave her or you, as soon as you turn the light on, yes, Pastor, that God is light. You've got to understand that, to understand why the LGBT community uses the rainbow. We can get there. So, all around God is light. All around God. All around God, I'm talking about God in his throne. All around God is a reflection of who he is. That's why we are the lights of the world. We must be a reflection of God. We, we just don't want to shine forth and be noticed. We don't want to be a superstar. No, 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 no. We've got to shine forth to trace back to God. That's why we say things like this. And God, you get the glory. Because after I shine forth, stop, stop looking at me. Don't stop at me. Don't stop at me. Come on, let's give the glory to. And I'll say it now because it'll get clearer. They want you to focus on the lights. They want you to focus on Maria Seaman. They want you to focus on Joe Osteen. They want you to focus on the lights. But it's so important that, uh-uh, as soon as you see the light, you trace it back and say, God, you are a wonder. Okay, all right. Satan must have folks caught up in the light, small owl, and not the giver of light. That's what I need you to get. He needs you captivated by the lights that you don't even have time to look at the giver of light. 
Ezekiel 1, 28. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard the voice of one that speak. That the very presence of God, the glory of God, brings forth light. The essence of God is light. You know, I, I've been saying this for years, maybe even a couple of decades. Every modern invention right now in this current time before the return of Jesus Christ, most inventions have to do with light. Laser. Um, fiber optics. Light. The power of light. Because Satan has to use false lights to draw you away from the light. That's why some people can stay away from church, but the home looking at that light cold TV, people miss that, you know. If it was a movie they wanted to see, uh, they would make time for the movie on time and because it's that's the plan of the devil. Get you captivated by the lights, the images, all the pretty colors, all the movie. But God says, nah, uh -uh. after you appreciate whatever you appreciate, get back to me. Give me the glory, the honor, and the praise. What emanates from God is who he is. So that's why all around him is light. Light. Now, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Talked about light. Light is made up of certain wavelengths, which produce colors commonly called rainbow colors, okay? That's what light is. Light is made up of, if this is light, it's made up of colors, rainbow colors. In science, we know them as Roy G. Beer, red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and violet. Roy G. Beer, right there. See that rainbow? Some of you, as soon as you see, you get tickled. Ooh, a rainbow, how cute. Okay. <laughs> the reason we see that rainbow is because the colors have been uh, broken up because their wavelengths are different, so they travel at different speeds. I bet. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, you're going to see something a little later. Now, the counter light. Remember, God is light. The enemy is counterfeit. And so the only way to fool people is to show up and take on the appearance of the real thing, the counter light. Church, it will always be about the real versus the unreal or the false versus the true or the authentic versus the counterfeit. To destroy something, you must come as close to the real thing as possible. They will convince those who are not wise or who do not have the spirit of discernment to fall for that which is not of God. Now, the counterfeit to God's light is Lucifer. I'll take my time right here. The counterfeit, the closest thing created, was closest to God, was Lucifer. This brings us to Satan, the devil. But his initial name was Lucifer. Lucifer, the original state of Satan or the devil. Lucifer. Isaiah 14 and 12. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground? which this weakened the nations. Some points to note. Lucifer has fallen from heaven or where the glory is. <laughs> he, he, he fell, was kick, kicked out of heaven, and he lost the glory estate. Lucifer has fallen from where the light is. Not from where the lights are or the light is. 
He has fallen from where the light is. In other words, he has fallen from the very presence of God. You better pay attention and think about how you would feel. <laughs> Lucifer has fallen from pure light. He has fallen from pure light. So let me just say this. He's carrying information. He's carrying information. All right. So Satan, Lucifer Satan now, was thrown out from heaven and belittled to the ground, to the earth or ground. Because the moment that he, be, he was kicked out of heaven, he went from being Lucifer to being Satan. He lost his estate. He lost his credentials. He lost his job. Luke 10 and 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He didn't, he didn't say Lucifer fell from heaven. Because the moment that Lucifer came against the glory, the purity of light, he lost his estate. And so his Satan, Satan, Satan fell from the glory place and took a bit of glory with him. Yes, he did. You know when you leave from one job to another, you, you don't forget all the information from the previous job. <laughs> That's why when they're going to get rid of you in the bank, they don't tell you a week in advance. You end up, you, you, you know, you don't even get into the already, your, your key thing. It don't work. And you can't get the elevator to your office because they don't want you to leave to, to go up there with a USB and save all this information. <laughs> And take it with you. Company secret. Glory to Jesus. I heard you, Holy Spirit. Satan carried, as it were, company secrets, mysteries from the presence of God. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. So he took a bit of glory with him. Why? Because he was created as an angel of light. Lucifer fell in name too. Watch this right here. Lucifer means light bearer. Carries the light. Did you hear me? <laughs> hey, I'm going to help you out here catch this on a vanity. Lucifer was God's armor bearer. I'm going to take my time here. He, he was a light bearer. See, that's why semen don't get tripped up, you know. If you've been with me for 10 years, you know that when people leave or whatnot and they were up in position... Hello? Don't look at the person. It's a spirit. It's a decision. It's, you know, da, 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 da. Lucifer, light bearer. Uh, Satan. He's now the adversary, the one who withstands. Once he fell, now he's coming against you. He's coming against. He knows he's in a battle. Then, the next dong red name is devil. Now he's not just falling, setting up to battle you, but now he's coming right at you. He's prone to slander, slanderous, accusing falsely. Now he'll come right in your face and tell you, you ain't no Christian. I know what you did. You, that's, that's his fallen state. He, he, he doesn't come to give you light. He comes to accuse the brethren. All right? And, and the reason that he wants to accuse you is because you, what is man that thou art mindful of him, that you made him a little lower than the angels and you crowned him with righteousness. In other words, you have been made, you can't operate like an angel, be here, there, and all that, but yet you choose to be righteous. That's why the enemy comes after you because the light that you have, he wants it because he knew what it was to have it in glory in the first place. He wants it back. And he can't go and get it back of himself, so he wants to take it away from God's people. As many as he can cause to fall, that's what he wants because with every saint of God that falls, he takes a bit of light back and he makes the world a little bit darker. 
when you see the decline of the devil and consider where he began, then you can start to understand the devil's anger and desire to get back that glory. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me just put a little pause here. That's why I want to, when we gather together in corporate praise and worship on a Sunday, I don't let anybody steal that time for, the, for God's glory, his corporate what? We are the lights of the world. If we can all at that point gather together and worship and honor God, there is no demon or devil uh, on his way to hell that can come into God's service and interrupt it. So it's we that must choose that no matter what we're going through, God, I'm going to give you the glory, God. I'm going to give you the honor. I'm going to give you the praise. I am a bullshit. Don't give away your light. Don't give away your glory. Don't give away your opportunity to let the enemy know that you are a child of God. No, he wouldn't. Because he likes doing that. You see. Mm -hmm. Well, Satan can never make it back into the presence of God. Therefore, he now lives to imitate God and to cause others to miss God's presence and desire his presence. <laughs> Please remember that Lucifer had much control in heaven. Lucifer was the overseer of all the angels. That is why so many followed his voice. I mean, he was God's armor bearer. Surely he ain't lying. God trusted him to be like his ace boy. So surely, let me tell you something. In the kingdom, in the church, you better know God for yourself. You better be in relationship with God for yourself. Because once in a while, from leadership to membership, they're going to miss it. You'll find yourself leaving the best thing like Shekinah. Worship, I'm just sorry, I'm just, that's the way I feel about it. Don't lose your mind. Don't lose your estate. Oh, God, oh, God. Yes, Lord. And so, and, so, and so he's the overseer of all the angels. So they followed his voice instead of God's voice and lost their place in heaven. Ezekiel, read, listen to this, 28, 13 through 17. Listen, listen. Thou hast been in Eden. The garden of God, every precious stone. Lucifer, every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, the diamond, the pearl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, uh, the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship uh, 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 of, of thy tabrets and, and the, thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub. That covereth, Lord have mercy. I have set thee so. I did that for you. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God, right in church, Zion. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of stones of fire. You've experienced the glory. You've experienced my presence, Lord Jesus. Oh, I can't stay there. Uh, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Ah, oh, till iniquity was found in thee, a weakness. Because you can't be perfect. So everybody's got a weakness. Huh? By thy multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled in the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. See, when you open up a gate, you, never, you open up that door. You become violent and do everything that you told everybody else not to do. Therefore, because of that, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. You ain't saying up here. And I will destroy the oak covering cherub. Overseer Lucifer, you're done. Bishop Lucifer, you're done. You see? Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Nobody's too high. I will destroy thee from the midst of the stones of fire. In other words, you're not going to feel this glory again. You're not going to experience the anointing because you messed up. And we know from other scriptures because you got puffed up. Came about you. <laughs> Ow. 
17. The, uh, well, here it is. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Oh, Lord Jesus. See, that's why when I was a teenager, my mama said to me that one sentence. Vanity. All is vanity. Ever since then, never carried a mirror with me. So I never looked. Look, I got to look at myself. I, it was my mama's fault. But this is, this is, <laughs> but this, but it scared me because I knew the word. So I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I won't get lifted up like, like he did. That's how deep I took stuff as a teenager. You see? Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. Corrupted his wisdom by the reason of thy, thy brightness. You're so bright. You know so much that you're dumb. <laughs> I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. So now he's being cast down, but notice that he's in places of authority even when he's cast down to the earth. Okay, let me teach her. The angels, all the angels of heaven, were lights, lights, and, and that's small L, lights, or watch this, constellations. So let me park it there for a moment. I shouldn't see any of God's people talking about I'm Sagittarius and Aries. Those are constellations. Those are from demonic, so you think, and people actually believe the horoscope because that's, that's the wisdom that Satan came. So now he uses these stars and makes you think, I'm Gemini. But that means my temperament's this. See? See? Lucifer was the lead star in the constellation of stars, in the whole constellation. Revelations 12 and 4, look, look, look. and his tail. And he was cast out. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. In other words, he was, he was taken to the earth. A third of the angels, all the brilliant angels who were up there in God's presence, said, oh, glory to God, all that. A third of them taken to the earth. And the time reflects to the fact that they are waiting for Jesus to be born to destroy him. So get that. Satan is waiting for Jesus to be born in your heart. Waiting for Jesus to come alive in your life so that he can kill, kill the baby. Kill your praise. Don't you ever come into church and allow somebody to kill your praise? Somebody to be a Lucifer when it's the devil? Did you get that? <laughs> Please understand that the evil heart of Lucifer, now called the devil, has not changed from before. Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Let me tell you something. Power is powerful. And position and power are drunkening. Okay? <laughs> Best for every pastor to understand that because it can be drunkening and make you think that, ooh, what control I have. Oh, really? That's why we're experiencing what we're experiencing right now, but I'm going to stick on my top, stay on my topic. The devil must get you to think that you are in favor with God while you really are fascinated by a divided God concept. Oh, this is going to get clear in a minute. The devil must get you to think you are in favor with God while you are really fascinated by a divided God concept. Okay, Satan wants you to look at the rainbow. Look at the rainbow, look at the rainbow, look at the rainbow, look at the rainbow. And think that God loves all the colors of the rainbow. That God is for colors of the rainbow. And that God desires you to be uh, the colors of the rainbow, the rainbow, the Wrong. God, hear me, is not the colors of the rainbow. God is light. I'm going to show you. Matter of fact. We're about ready for that video, Alder Fox. When a beam of light hits a piece of glass straight on, it passes right through it. 
But the waves that make up the light actually get slowed down by the glass and only go back to their normal speed when they come out the other side. That slowing down is what causes white light to split into a rainbow of colour whenever it hits glass on an angle. It happens because glass slows some colours of light more than others and because slowing down on an angle makes light bend. It's easy to understand the bending if you picture how the light waves would look from above, like how waves at the beach look if you see them from the air. And while white light's made up of all the different colours of light, it also helps to look at them one colour at a time. When a wave front of red light hits glass on an angle, the part of the wave that enters the glass first gets slowed down before the rest, and that changes the angle of the whole wave, like how waves bend around a cliff. Violet light gets slowed down even more by glass, so its waves bend more. All the other colours get bent somewhere in between. So the colours get separated when they first enter the glass on an angle, and they spread out even more when they speed up on an angle as they leave. The reason the different colours slow down different amounts in glass is because they've got different wavelengths. Red light has the longest wavelength, followed by orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and finally violet with the shortest wavelength. And the shorter the wavelength, the longer it takes to travel through glass. That's because light interacts with electrons in the molecules that make up glass. Long wavelength light, like red, only interacts a bit with the electrons, so it doesn't get slowed much. But shorter wavelength violet light interacts more, so it gets slowed down more. So it's the combination of hitting glass on an angle and different wavelengths interacting with the electrons in the glass different amounts that makes light hitting a prism spread out into a beautiful spectrum of colour and some classic album cover art. You're going to get clearer. You're going to get clearer. Points to understand about the difference between light, God, and the rainbow, which does not show God, but shows many gods. Number one, God enters any medium or environment as light. You saw that in the beginning. When light hits a new medium, something it isn't, such as water or prism, it experiences division. Okay, let me, let me, let me pause here. Is God divided? As a matter of fact, division is totally the opposite of God. That's why God commands his blessing in unity. So God is not in the division. <laughs> That's right, Mother Russell. God isn't in the rainbow. I'm going to hit myself. I'm going to behave. The pure light, you saw it, begins to break up into different components. I'll say it again. The pure light, light that comes from God, Straight light becomes bent. Straight becomes bent. Just trying to help somebody. I'm just trying to help somebody. Straight becomes bent. Okay, I'm just, just, just trying to help somebody right there. Mm -hmm. It's true. The components of light operate at different speeds and or wavelengths. So the colors that we see operate differently. So they can't be of God because God is unity, one. Straight light. Once it hits another medium, bends and moves all types of directions. You're going to see all sorts of things with the LGBT community. They ain't straight. Matter of fact, we're straight. They call heterosexuals are straight. Okay. Five, the different colors have their unique pathways. Hmm. Very unique. 
There you get more unique. The more the world lasts, it's getting more unique. Six, the light that left is no longer one. Did you get that? The light that left God's throne is no longer one. The unity has experienced division. So when I look at the rainbow, I need to keep on hitting this home. I don't see God. I see division. I see a breaking up of who God is. So those colors don't get me happy and say, look at God's rainbow. No, 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 no. You have to look. See, you can't say, look at God's rainbow. You're going to go, look at God's symbol. When light exits the prism, it shows that it is no longer white light. It becomes a bevy of lights, variety. All types of variety. Or oh, the rainbow. It enters in as light. That's it, light. Just straight up light. But once it hits a medium that's contrary to the medium through which it was initially sent, it then becomes other things. So, you know, the medium of the church is holiness. But if you've got some pastors who don't preach holiness, their medium is going to cause the same word I read to say something like this. God accepts homosexuality. God don't do that. But the medium is different. They ain't in Shekinah. They're not in a Pentecostal church. They're not in a church that believes holiness. Eight. The rainbow does not show God. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> the rainbow does not show God. The rainbow shows what happens when God is sent through a medium and that medium interferes with who it is. Mm -hmm. See, thank you, Holy Spirit. The ideal is that God, like he did in, in the Garden of Eden, would just be light. Come down and commune with you as light. But that can't happen now. So what he does is he sends light to give you a message about what happens when you're not with him. you get it. The rainbow actually shows rebellion against God's ways and a desire for each color to go its own way or its own pathway. Hey, Shabakata. Hey, Abokita. Huh? So instead of there being one way, the way, the truth, and the light, all of a sudden you got all these truths, all these realities. That's rebellion against what God sent it to be. Typically, after rain, light has to band through the clouds. It's called refraction. The light is broken up into colors to remind you that there was another time when mankind went his own way instead of God's way. So when you see that pretty rainbow, you got to remember that, oh, that's, that's a sign that reminds me that there was a time when mankind went his own way. So that rainbow is God's thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank, thank you for warning me, God. Thank you, God, that every time it rains, God, every time you send your light and it makes it through raindrops or through clouds, that you're actually saying, I love you so much, I'm sending you this warning. Eleven, there was another time when mankind lost his oneness with God and every man did what was right in his own eyes. He goes his own way. You don't want to go your own way. That, that's why the more liberal the world becomes, the more ridiculous stuff you're going to see as the wavelengths continue to divide. See, 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 if, if they come in, and you're going to see some pictures in a minute, if, if you got God from heaven shooting his light straight, straight, hits a medium and begins to break up. Notice that first it was pretty close to God, but as time continues, it gets wider and wider. 12, mankind is captivated by the beautiful lights. Mankind should beware whenever it sees those pretty lights. They should be reminded that there was another time when mankind bent another way 
or went another way and chose another way. Come on now, I'm going to teach that another time in this series right here. Huh? That when, the, when the rainbow first appeared, when mankind bent another way. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go there yet, but you, you, you know where I'm going. He, he bent over. He, 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 he had sagging pants. He bent. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it right there because I'm not there yet. But, but when mankind bends another way, it's unnatural. Yes. Uh-huh. So we have to be, next time you see that, I don't mind, I don't mind you, you see him, I'm in awe of the rainbow. Yeah, I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to say, God, I thank you that. I mean, God, what if, you, what if you didn't send that rainbow? Eventually, mankind will forget why you had to send the rainbow in the first place because of the propensity of mankind to go his own way. Every time we see the rainbow, we ought to drop in obedience to God and say, God, how great you are, that your grace and mercy has spared me. And God, I accept that I will not go astray, but I will go straight according to your word. This is why God uses the rainbow as a warning to mankind. Ain't no bother. I'm going to that cake. Genesis 9, 11 through 15. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Go specific. He's saying, water ain't going to do it next time, y'all. It's not going to be water. You ain't got to worry. Plus, by now, you'll build submarines and all types of stuff because you're so bright. So it ain't going to be water. It's not going to be water. Twelve. And God said, this is a token of my covenant. You hear me? A token of his covenant, of his blood covenant. Ah, which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Look at God. He doesn't fail. He was doing it uh, since this time, and he's still doing it today. Oh, God, you are God. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of the covenant between me and the earth. Watch this now. Not only the earth, the natural earth. See, natural earth, I'm not going to drown you, but the earth, mankind, I'm not going to drown you. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. 15, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the waters. He is very, he keeps on saying it, waters. And the waters no more uh, become a flood to destroy all flesh. And we know in his word that no, water's not going to destroy flesh. That the next time is going to be fire. That's why he keeps talking about being bent. Going your own way. And mention Sodom and Gomorrah. The rainbow should not bring you joy. That's it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to upset the apple cart right here. The rainbow should not bring you joy. It should remind you of the bond covenant between God and man and the last time that God destroyed the earth by flood. Look at this. That's what it ought to remind you of. As soon as you see the rainbow, you have to say, thank you, Jesus. Now, that's a different type of joy because you're thanking the Lord. That you won't be uh, destroyed by whatever means God has in his heart and mind. Why would God, think about this, why would God have to remind you unless it's something going to happen in the front, in the future? In no sense to remind you and to warn you of anything unless something is coming. See, devil nursing, you know, Lucifer nursing, now Satan, I mean the devil, 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 devil. The rainbow is seen because of a cloudy moment. It is not seen because of the sunshine. Get that. That sun shines every day. That's not the reason it's seen. It's seen because of the cloud. It is not seen because the sun shines. The rainbow should not be used for celebrating sin. Sin is not sunshine. No, sin is actually a cloud of darkness through which God's light must shine. So in spite of what's going on in the LGBT community, the ray of God's light must still shine forth. You've still got to be holy. You've still got to be pure light. You've still got to be a testament as to who God is, no matter how diverse the lights have become. You know, it's, it's not your goal that, that when you see them, you got to go and you got to stir and you got to be captivated. No, 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 no. Remember, they did that at Sodom. You know, who was it? Um... Abraham's nephew, Lot, right? Captivated by Sodom. Okay, that's, that's why the wife got left behind. Yeah, you get captivated by Sodom. 
you get left behind. So while the LGBT community celebrates the rainbow, the irony is that the rainbow signifies the darkness of their sin. So the devil has them celebrating the fact that they're wrong. (laughs) That's what blows my mind. The devil has them so blinded that they are celebrating, repent, repent. We're not with God. We're not of God. That's what they're celebrating. And some of them never knew it until this moment right here. That's what your rainbow means. Your rainbow didn't come from Satan. Your rainbow didn't come from the devil. The initial initial light came from God and then became distorted. And you are a distorted bunch of people. That's who the LGBT community is. They are distorted. Now, say that. It was the sin of sodomy which brought God to the point of destroying all living beings to begin the earth anew. Mm -hmm. So in essence, the devil has the LGBT community celebrating the very symbol that exists to state that their way of living is seen as darkness to God. (laughs) In other words, while you're looking at all the lights, God sees the darkness again. You're, You're looking at all the pretty colors, God sees black. He sees the absence of who he is. The devil has the LGBT community so blinded that they are celebrating the rainbow which testifies that their sick sin brought about a flood the last time and that the next time their destruction will be by fire. See? So when you see them celebrating the rainbow, it's like they're saying, yeah, last time, last time the waters took us out. Next time the fire's going to take us out. They're so blinded because of their, their, their diverse and perverse way which has strayed away from the straight way, they're so diverse, they don't understand that the devil has them celebrating their own demise. In essence, the devil is slick. He has the LGBT community celebrating their own demise. One day, this is this part got me, one day Satan, the devil, will laugh at all of them in their face and say, I sold you the rainbow. And you brought in hook, line, and sinker. Welcome to hell. <laughs> He'll be laughing, but I won't be. Because we're, we in Bermuda are now talking about, for somebody needs to be set free on this message, we are talking about legalizing a situation which condemns people to hell. You understand me? We've already now said they can't go to jail and they're human, da, 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 da. and we just continue this. So all we do is do this, open it wider, wider, wider. And you know what we call it in the earth realm? Freedom, liberty. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I thought about it. I said, the first color, I didn't put this down, but now the Holy Spirit brought it back to me. He said, what's the first color? Red. Do you know in how the color they're going to see mostly is red and orange? That's fire. In how they are going to be reminded of the man principle beginning slow down colors. Remember, it's red, orange, yellow. So red, orange, and yellow are the fire colors. Come on, think of fire. Think of fire. It's not blue, indigo, and violet. It's red, orange, and yellow. So the heat of your rainbow can burn you for eternity. That's what's torment. Satan, didn't we, didn't we, um, we were just celebrating. We were just having a good time. He says, yeah, well, here here you go. Here's your red, orange, and yellow, nah. Torment. In the end, God will not destroy sinners by water, but by the intent. You want to be light? You want to be, you want to, you want to know what light is? Fire. Not going to be destroyed by water, but by the intense light of fire. As the LGBT community lifts up flags of rainbow collars and wears rainbow collar clothing, they are pumping their fist at God. See, 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 see. You know, got man wearing thongs, rainbow collars, and and man dressed in makeup, rainbow collars. And and what that's, that's just pumping your fist at God. They think... Now, now, listen now, because this, in Bermuda especially, what they're thinking is, 
Because especially those at the forum, their mindset is, God loves us all, and we love, no, no. Not if you, be, if you believe in the rainbow like the LGBT community believes in the rainbow, that's not God. God is light. God ain't no rainbow. A rainbow is distorted light. I want to keep on saying that. A rainbow is light that has gone wrong. A, a rainbow is light that has gone its individual pathways. All right, all right. God will not accept diversion from his way. Remember, I said he's sovereign. That's why I said in the beginning. Ain't no uh, getting into negotiations with God. No, no, God can't. God, can we go this way? Will you? Because you know you're a God of love. God is love. Can we be? No, 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 no. I am, I'm a God of love, but I am light. You, you understand me, church? So he's not going to accept diversion from his way. His way is the straight way. It is his pathway of light. Straight, straight. Straight gate. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm just trying to help somebody. I ain't finished yet. Watch it. The way of the devil is the Broadway. Broadway, cameras, lights, and actions. Didn't all this free liberty really start at the Big Apple? Why they say the Big Apple? Yeah, yeah I can't answer that. I'm just going to leave that right there. God is not the rainbow. God is not the rainbow. God is light. And light and the rainbow are not the same thing. I will say it again, that the rainbow is a distortion of light. Oh, God, if you get anything tonight, understand it. Huh? huh? Well, God, treat everybody nice and kind, but you better understand. Don't you start accepting that way of life. It's distorted. You can't be double-minded. You either believe God or you don't. You either stand on his word or you don't. You either believe the holiness of his word or you don't. You either are light or you're rainbow colors. Can't be both. You can't be both. You can't be both. The rainbow, I like this, is the counterfeit of God and is used by the counterfeit angel of light, Satan, and will fool many into happily dancing their way into hell. You go around, take trouble about um, changing your profile picture to the rainbow. Oh, Jesus, look at this. Look at this earth. Some Christians change it to rainbow. Don't, don't know that they're celebrating a distortion, a division. Hmm? And when God commands his blessing and unity. Unity. No, no, they want diversity, lifestyles. Mm. Now watch this, watch this. <laughs> the LGBT community has even lined up with God's word by calling their celebration the pride parade. Pride. That's what the parade, parade is called. Pride. Pride. Devil got him walking right into it. Watch this now. Perfect. Pride caused Lucifer to be cast out of heaven. Proverbs 16 and 8. Pride goeth before destruction. Pride parade. I mean, they could have called it anything. Could have called it rainbow parade. Could have called it parade of many colors. But uh-uh. Somebody way in the beginning, somebody said, mm-mm, this parade is going to be called pride because Satan is just laughing, saying, look at that. I've now got them dancing to the destruction. And guess what? They've named the parade the very reason that I was kicked out of God's presence. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Oh, yeah. Because now you got brilliant people. Money lining up with it. Haughty spirit can't touch us because we've got money behind us. Can't come to our hotel. I don't even want to go there now. I wouldn't go there now. I go there right now. I just see rainbow. I used to eat all the time there off the track. I ain't going there now. I have tea. If I have to have tea, I have to go ahead and make my own tea. I'm not going there. Holiness, not pride. Holiness is your ticket to heaven. Matthew 7, 13, and 14. Thank you, Lord. Enter ye. Now, follow it now. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because 
Straight is the gate. And narrow is the way. Jesus. <laughs> Which leadeth unto life. Mm. And few. That's a small few. It doesn't seem like it's just a little bit of us. Few there be that find it. Watch this slide, people. Watch this slide right here. Sweet slide right here. Best slide of the night. Let me read the scripture again while you look at the slide. Just look at the slide. Uh huh. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. You see? Now, the sun, which emanates light, straight. All all straight ray. Straight. Again, just reiterating it because I must keep saying it. You are white, invisible light. No color. By the way, that's why Satan likes to put colors against each other. Black versus white. You know, yellow might be Filipinas or whatever. You know, different nations. Right? See, he's into that. I mean, I, I, I'll keep on saying it. I'm not into black or white. I'm into right. Okay? Because I understand this. But when you understand this, you can't be against a white person or a black person. Light comes in. in you know, vis, then it's broken up. See, thank you, Holy Spirit, or something. See, when light comes in, white light, or really invisible because you can't see it in light, <laughs> Right? Once it hits a medium, like a prison, it breaks up. So if you're truly of God, when all, we sing that song, when all God's children get together, what a time, what a time, because you don't see color. But if you've got an issue with white people or non-black people, whatever, that means you're divided against God because God just made people. This thing is serious, y'all. Yeah, just turn it again. The sun coming down, and, and it's, it's, it's the prism we've been looking at, but the prism that actually breaks up the light after rain is water drops, drops. And so that's where light bands. That's why you usually see the rainbow after rain, <laughs> all right? Narrow white light. That light, church of God, is holy. <laughs> that light, church of God, is pure. It, it's strict. So I, I'm trying to get God's people to want that white light. I'm trying to get God's people to appreciate the white light and say, God, I, I want to be holy. God, God, be strict with me. Um, God, chasing me. Come, come after me. If I start to ban and go my way, bring me back in. Straighten me because I don't want to miss who you are. Okay. Broad is the way. That's the rainbow. People are going straight to hell. I'm going to love my child if my child goes one way or the other. I'm going to want my child to get back to being straight. I'm going to be like, get back through the prism and get back to. <laughs> get back to where you were in the beginning. When you were born, when you were in my. Lord, I hear you, Holy Ghost. When you were in my womb, you were bent in my womb. God ignited that life. That's what you would see, you know, light, bam, inside the womb, the moment that life is given to the egg and sperm, Oop, spark, light. That's God. That's why they're all searching. So that's why when we keep on praying for a homosexual community, because they need to make their way back to the creator. There you go. And so the Broadway rainbow colors of light, they're relaxed. They're going the own way. You know, the different, there it is, the different speeds. You know, red's going one speed, orange going another, green going another, blue, you know, red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, just going the own way. Every, month, every man, watch this, every man's doing what's right in his own eyes. I can't help it, it's who I am. Let me tell you something. More than who you are is who God made you to be. More than who you are is who made you. You are your father's child. That Broadway is impure and unholy. So <laughs> the homosexual community can stand you. You, you, they like me. They can't stand you. <laughs> they should not be able. They sh- if the homosexual community 
loves God's word and loves Pentecost and holiness, that's an issue. Something's up with that. So it has, you have just your presence, your white light. That's right. Make them should make them mad. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why you're holier than thou. Mm-hmm. Bible thumping. <laughs> because, because they have chosen to go the broad way. All right, so that's fine. They should not like us, but we've got to love them because they came from the same father we did. God permitted them to be born. Now, not everyone that's born is going to make it into heaven. We've been predestined. God knows who's his. So people have to make a choice. My final sentence here tonight, (laughs) just the foundation, because you have to understand that, that, that division. Be glad to be disciplined to go straight. See, oh, church, oh, church. If when you hear the word of God and the word of God beats you, that's when your loudest hallelujah should be. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! I almost went my own way. I almost thought I was brighter than the pastor. Almost thought that I knew more than the Holy Ghost who speaks to the pastor. Thank you, God. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Shiva Kata. Stay straight. Stay in the word of God. I'm telling you, Sunday comes in, and that word that I minister by the Holy Spirit, if it pricks you, if you, look, if you got an attitude, look, let me tell you something. Be glad. See, see the trick of the enemy is he, hmm, pass or somebody. <laughs> and no, get mad, that's fine. Get mad and then get straight. <laughs> right? Because let me tell you the beauty of it. Because it means that you're still connected enough to the light. You're close enough to the beginning of the entry of that prism that you can be pulled back by God's spirit. Now, once you exit all over there, that's pride. That's the parade. That's Lucifer who's going to fall to be Satan, who's going to fall to be the devil. So we want to love the word when it draws us to God. Amen? Did you learn something tonight? You learned something tonight.